the polling uh, following the debate. I mean, the interesting thing that I'm finding is that in past years, I have assessed debates based on the substance that is exchanged. But it, I mean, after the the presidential debate, the first one, and maybe it appears now, possibly the last one, it's unclear. There, there was absolutely no substance, as far as I could tell, and it, it largely um, I- irrelevant at this point, right? I mean, if you don't have a, a, a um, I mean, I think for the people who tune into debates who are interested in substance, it should be pretty clear the primary differences between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Uh, Joe Biden is, at the very least, not Donald Trump. And every issue ranging from uh, the Supreme Court to the total abdication, I mean, it's probably worse than abdication of responsibility in terms of the pandemic. Uh, they have been a, a, a negative, a net negative, this administration in terms of dealing with this pandemic. You don't have to believe me. The New England Journal of Medicine, which, um, as far as I know, does not generally um, issue any type of editorials relative to elections. It is a 202-year-old medical journal. The journal did not endorse Joe Biden. It did not mention Donald Trump by name. But this is the uh, key graph here. Our leaders have largely claimed immunity for their actions. This is um, is in regards to the federal government's weak and inappropriate policies. But this election gives us the power to render judgment. Reasonable people will certainly disagree about the many political positions taken by candidates. But truth is neither liberal nor conservative. When it comes to the response to the largest public health crisis of our time, our current political leaders have demonstrated that they are dangerously incompetent. We should not abet them and enable the deaths of thousands more Americans by allowing them to keep their jobs. Uh, The editor-in-chief said, we rarely publish editorials signed by all the editors, Uh, but they did so this time. And so, I mean, that, you know, that in and of itself one would think would provide enough substance. And last night, I, it's, it's hard to say that there was um, any more you know, significant. I, I don't know that there was any specifics about any policies, frankly. Um, I think we heard a little bit about uh, Joe Biden's uh, pledge to not tax, uh, raise taxes on anybody making less than $400,000. And... I honestly don't know that I could point to another sort of specific policy that was even uh, remotely discussed uh, at that point. Uh, Nevertheless, people tune into these uh, debates and they make assessments based on performances. We had another situation where the moderator seemed completely incapable of maintaining the rules that they explicitly set out at the beginning of the debate. Mike Pence uh, kept running over on time. So ultimately, uh, Kamala Harris was given other time, but it was um, Mike Pence answered, it appeared to me, none of the difficult questions that were posed to him. I mean, even remotely difficult questions. I think there was literally four or five times where he explicitly ignored the question. Almost said, like, I'm not going to answer that one, but I've got another one I would like to answer. Um, Kamala Harris had one moment, I would say, like that, where they wanted to uh, key in on uh, the question of of court packing. Um, And as I said in the uh, debate wrap-up, we did a uh, live stream last night. In the debate wrap-up that was, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, dipped in uh, tequila, the, uh, the, the wrap-up. Um, one of the things I think that uh, Kamala Harris uh, could have done, and it was, you know, obviously this is a, um, there are challenges uh, for 
a a woman, I think, in a debate in our political sphere. There's challenges for uh, a uh, a black woman in the context of our debates, or even just with, broadly speaking in our political sphere. You're seeing a lot of a lot of uh, a commentary on the right that Kamala Harris's uh, smile was too smug, I guess, which is almost hitting the, uh, you know, it's almost uh, about as ham-fisted as you could get. Um, but I think uh, it, she would have been well-served to point out to the audience and to Pence that he's not answering the questions. Um, with all that said, she won the debate if there is a way to assess this in terms of the instant polls of registered voters who watched. Six in 10, according to a CNN instant poll, said Harris won. 38% said Pence uh, won. In interviews conducted before the debate, 61% of those same voters said they expected Harris to win. 38%, uh, 36% thought, uh, percent thought Pence would. There was a very big gender gap, which... And while both genders thought that Harris won, I mean, men split 48% Harris, 46% Pence, it was 69% to 30% for uh, women. And I think the Democrats have to feel pretty good about that. Women really uh, drove the 2018 midterm um uh, like slaughter essentially that took place um, and led to one of the biggest democratic vote tally wins on an off year election in, in, in decades. Um, so Kamala Harris, uh, I think uh, comes out of that uh, looking pretty good. And we have the opportunity to look at this footage from the debate. And this is, I would say, um, this is getting the most attention. I would say there's basically um, two sort of non, even remotely substantive uh, things that have come out of the debate from last night that are getting probably the most amount of attention. Um, Pence not answering any of the questions. That's been a big part of it. Pence going over time and the moderator saying, thank you, Vice President, over and over and over again. And uh, Kamala Harris, I think, you know, like I said, had a, a, a better second half than she did first half. But really, at the end of the day, the genuine winner, the biggest winner of the debate was the fly that um, took the opportunity to land on Mike Pence and stay there for apparently two minutes. Uh, now, I, is, this, is this video that you have, Brendan? Yes, this is a two-minute close-up of Mike okay, Pence's let's, uh, Well, forehead. I don't want to play it for two minutes, but <laughs> for a moment. Um, I, I wonder, let's, yeah, let, let this roll and let's see what we got here. Um, to the men and women who serve in law enforcement, wow. I want everyone to know who puts on the <laughs> uniform of law enforcement every day, that President Trump and I stand with you. And it is remarkable that that when Senator Tim Scott tried to so pass white. the police reform yeah. bill, yeah, let me just be clear. A group it's not the fly state. talking, right? That's Pence talking. Yeah. And then you filibustered okay. Senator uh, Tim Scott's bill on the Senate floor that would have provided new accountability, new repeat resources. Look, we don't have to choose between supporting wow. law enforcement, All right. we can't watch public safety, two minutes, and supporting But I think people effort. get the idea. The big winner is uh, the this fly. Is and then we are other it's people. like one of those uh, ro robot bowls in a bar, kind of. That's what the fly was doing to Pence's head there. Stand off the yeah, mechanical riding, bowl. Riding, mechanical riding, bowl, yeah. Riding the uh, vice president. Um, and then also a lot of people make it a big deal about uh, Mike Pence. Either he, he, his, he had one eye that was watering or um, – and um, – I don't know. That seemed to garner a, a lot of attention. I mean, you know, much of this is uh, is is theater in this instance. Uh, but I thought um, Harris held her own with Pence in many respects. Um, you know, um, I don't think it's going to change the outcome of the election. And in that sense, 
it is a win for the Democrats because Joe Biden has a um, significant lead in the polls. Now, there are other issues with the election. We will talk about that in a moment. But um, I think the Democrats got what they wanted out of last night. And, um, and Mike Pence probably did too. He's thinking about 2024. 